Good morning this morning. All right. Just wanted to come in here and uh, say happy Thursday to you. Uh, we're coming live this morning. Uh, happy Thursday morning. I hope your day is full, full of loving Jesus and loving his people. Uh, we're just going to get on here today and just have a few words and I wanted to just talk about couple things here that uh, kind of been on my mind and my heart. <clears throat> but, uh, one of those things is going to be uh, talking about, I was on uh, speaking back and forth to some folks with comments uh, on Facebook the other day. Uh, it was Pentecost Radio. Uh, a slew of folks and uh, there's no no real issue with folks being ignorant and ignorant is not bad uh, remaining ignorant can be bad because if you decide to remain ignorant then that's what happens when you decide not to learn or um, actually at least figure out what someone else may be bringing to you and maybe through them God may be talking to you and trying to get your attention about some things uh, but anyhow I just want to <clears throat> one of the things was you know people like well you don't believe Romans this is that and that's that and um, they, they were talking about, you know, the, the, the normal religious um, go-to scriptures to give them their, I guess, safety in what they feel they're believing and what they are taught. And I've, I've, again, I've, I've said many times, uh, those of you who have listened to messages, um, you know that I was deep in religion. Um, from the time I was 18 years old, I received the Holy Ghost. I got baptized in Jesus' name in a UPCI church. Um, now, that isn't where it started for me. That's not where God called me. Um, and I, I tell people that it's not just... You know, it's like if you, if God is calling you, it doesn't mean God's calling you to church. God is calling you personally. And and the reason many go to church and the reason many don't accept the call of God is because they feel they have to go to church. And many have had very horrible or negative experiences with church. And I don't blame any for not going to church. Um, it served me well, I will tell you that. Um, it, And there was times that it didn't serve me well. Um, but when God called me, um, when I cried out to God, he heard me. He heard my cry. And, and, and as Jacob did... I, I kind of threw it out to God, and I said, God, if you'll do this, because I was in trouble at the moment, I said, God, if you'll do this, I'll do, and God heard me, and, you know, to my learning, to my understanding at that point so far, even though I was never religious or never brought up in church or any of those things, uh, I just felt by what I had known and what I had heard others say is that if you want to find God, you must go to church. And so that seemed to be the obvious thing that I would need to do when I made that commitment to God. And so I decided that, but, but see, I, I just want to back up a second. See, my heart had already changed. I didn't need to go to church to secure the deal with God. I didn't need to change. I didn't need to go to church for confirmation 
of what I'd already communicated with God. And he didn't need me to go to church to hear me. Uh, so these are some of the most important things I would like to uh, share with you in my witness and my testimony. And looking back, I can see these things. Then I couldn't. Um, so that's kind of where I'm coming from. And, and, you know, some of the discussions the other day, you know, of, of course, I do not believe you go to church to find God. I do not believe you stay with God by being in church. I do not believe you probably should be going to a church. Now, there's there's some things you can listen to messages and if you want to reach out, I'll, I'll further dive into that. But I'm not going to get to that today. Um, but those are just the way I feel. After, when I was 18 years old, got the Holy Ghost, I, I'm in and out of the church here and there. I was established. I UPC licensed. Um, minister, um, I did. I was contributor to religion. I was contributor to, I have to say, hundreds of Bible studies, more than a hundred Bible studies, I will say. I have influenced many families and people to, to get in and stay in church. Now, Again, I, I come back and say years later, I understand that what I should have been teaching them, and, and, and even though it was a, a small part of that in the teaching, which made it seem good to me at the time, is that it was more leaning to linking people to a church. Now, I get the whole social side of this, okay? And, 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 you know, this is one of the things that religions harp on, that, you know, if you've, if you've got to build a family and you build a people around that are nice to people and, you know, and you can help them and things like that, well, it doesn't have to be a church for you to engage in that. The, the, the core, the actual core of your belief should not be around a church. And they try to say that the church, the physical church, is what Jesus spoke of. The church that he uh, supposedly said to Peter upon this church, or on this um, idea, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Um, but Jesus was not speaking of a physical church, a physical congregation that folks and religion called church today. Jesus was talking about the believers. They that worship him in spirit and in truth, they are the true worshipers that God seeks. And, and, and it doesn't go to a physical. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. I, I don't know how we miss that. I don't know how we, we move beyond that. And, and those things don't somehow um, uh, spark a question in our mind when, when we are so tied to a physical church and so tied to physical uh, hierarchy of, of pastors, teachers, preachers, evangelists, and all these other things that people want to say that the church teaches. And I say the church very loosely. Loosely, this is man's made up uh, deal. And you say, well, it's in the Bible. Well, it's in the Bible. And let me just, I guess this would be a good segue. So when, when the person's like, so you don't believe the Bible? Yes, I do believe the Bible. And here's how I believe the Bible. It, it, it's, I believe all of it, just not the way the religious world wants us to believe it. I believe Jesus sent back the Holy Ghost to lead and guide us into all truth. Jesus said that. The Spirit, when he come, is come, he will speak of me. Not some hierarchical, pastoral, priest-laden uh, ordinance building that was done away with. Why would Jesus come? Why didn't he just send another man like Moses and, 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 and continue on? Because it was not good enough. It would never bring the comers down to perfection. Read your Bible in Hebrews. 
There's some very good stuff in there. Really makes sense of, of, of how what Jesus came to do. He, he came to push away the old and bring in the new, a new and living way. And, and for those of uh, apostolic faith and, and, and how great the apostolic movement and how you put that before Jesus' own words and his own sayings uh, and teachings and, and the, by the nature of the very view and, and, and spirit by which he done things, since you put that beforehand, go to Acts 15, and you'll see where where Peter and James are like, hey, listen, we couldn't even do the law. And we're telling these Gentiles to, to obey the law and, and, and to be circumcised. Well, see, this is ordinances by the law of Moses. But see, the church needs the old law of Moses. They need it, they need it mixed in. See, they, they, they have not changed the bottles. They're still trying to put this new wine in the old bottle that Jesus said it would just break the bottle. It would just be messy. And that's exactly what religion is today. It's messy. Because they, they bring in Paul, most of the apostolic and the UPC, by my experience, by my own witness, they follow Paul, not Jesus. And, and I would say they follow Jesus by following Paul if Paul wasn't contrary to Jesus. But that's not true. He is contrary to Jesus. He does bring things about that Jesus never spoke of and that Jesus never would have went for by the readings and understanding we have of the scripture of Jesus. The man that, the, that Paul had never met, the, the God-man Jesus, and, and not one place where you find, oh, you'll, you'll see, you'll see in areas and generalizations, but you'll not see that where Paul has quoted or brought about uh, recollections of miracles of Jesus. Now you say, why would that be? Okay, now you say, well, he didn't, you he said he didn't meet Jesus. No, he didn't. He says he met him on the road to Damascus. All right, but he didn't physically meet him. And the, the, the criteria plainly says, and, and, and I'm just jumping over here, where Paul uh, uh, kind of uh, takes on himself saying he's an apostle. Um, he's not a true apostle as in the meaning of apostle of Jesus' hand-picked people that he picked. And, and we say, well, Matthias and uh, Bartholomew, I think it was, where they cast lots. And they said the criteria for this to be replacing Judas Iscariot was that they had to be with Jesus from the beginning. They had to witness and be amongst his teachings physically. And Paul never met any of those. All right, so he could not have been a replacement. It was Matthias. Uh, so that was the 12th apostle. Paul's name will not be on any of the, the gates in heaven, um, the doors, um, like the 12 apostles. He will not be there. He will be no greater than you or I if you believe that Paul was right. So I perhaps, uh, I actually do not feel that the things that were attributed to Paul, and I say it very, very, um, Cautiously, because I really don't know if I'm not. I'm not trying to put Paul down, but if what was written of him, and if that's what he believed, then he was wrong. And we have no business following after Paul by contrary things that Jesus taught, and by which the Spirit Jesus presented them, and the purpose that Jesus came. And, and I, I had brought this out, and I know we stopped on the reading there, but I think this is important, that people, when you look, when I, when I say the spirit or the character of Jesus Christ, what I'm speaking of is that even though some words may not be spoken exactly, and that's what people like to hang on, and, and they love to say, oh, well, Jesus didn't actually say that. 
And I'm not conjecturing anything here. It's just the fact that why did Jesus come? He, Jesus said that he came to seek and save that which was lost. He came to heal. And John said, is this he whom we seek or should we seek another? And Jesus said, let him know that the gospel is being preached to the poor. The blind see. The deaf hear. I'm paraphrasing, of course. But these are things he said this should let him know that I'm the one because I'm doing good. So when we get to Paul and we get to when he met Jesus, I, I don't know of any, any negative, and you, I don't even call it negative, but I don't, I don't see anywhere except for when Jesus um, found them selling in the courts of the temple. And he upended the money changers' tables and said, you've made my house a, a den of thieves, and it should be called a house of prayer, not a place to find salvation. Um, now, again, if you want to listen to a lot of our messages, you will find out that not everything, when Jesus spoke of things, he was talking relation so that you would understand. He was still under the law of Moses up until he chose not to be when he died and forgave our sins and, and he rose the third day and, and he came back. All right? That all changed. The, 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 the curtain was rent or tore in twenty in two. And that was the old law being abolished completely gone the holiest of holies was now open to all men through jesus christ no longer did you need to go to a priest no longer did you need to go to a pastor no longer were you subjected by man and under man to find god but nigh, we are made nigh by the blood of Jesus. And we can come boldly to the throne of grace that we may find repentance and help in the time of need. And that is where we're at today. This is grace. This is access by all to God through the face of Jesus Christ. So we no longer are bound by those old things. And, and, and again, when you go into Acts, you see that the apostles said you don't. We couldn't even obey the law. We couldn't even do it. Our fathers couldn't even do this thing. And, and again, if you go to Hebrews, you, you go 11, I think it's uh, 39, 40. You, you see that they could not be made perfect without us. And this is where the Holy Ghost, when Jesus came back, the Holy Ghost was given to us to lead and guide us into all truth. So we're, we're, we're not to just suck down everything in the Bible as a commandment. Uh, it, it, it talks about, and this is, this is pretty common sense, that it's for instruction. How does it instruct me today? The same way by showing the leading, both pro and con, and the veering off course of the writings of those who perhaps on purpose or by ignorance are leading others away from the following of Jesus Christ and moving them back into an old law. Jesus said he'd come to bring life. And he said the letter killeth, but the spirit and this is the spirit of truth. Albeit when he has come, he will lead and guide you into all truth. And bring to your remembrance whatsoever I have said. Not what some pastor said. Not what some priest said. Not what some sermon said. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We, if you feel that God is not big enough to touch your heart, touch your mind, to heal your body, 
to heal your mind. And he cannot drop thoughts to your mind. And he cannot communicate with you. And that you would not need to go to a church three times a week. That you would need to, to pick up the phone and call some man called your pastor, youth, youth director, leader, whatever titles that you want to give them, bishop, whatever. You feel that you have to reach out to them and you've missed everything Jesus has come to bring us. Does that mean you can't get advice or whatever? Don't call it advice because you're leaning on them for your spiritual guidance. If you want to know what the best stocks to pick, things like that, I'm not saying go to the Holy Ghost. Not that you couldn't. But some things God has just put in place. God is not calling out verbally every day when it is to rain and when it's not to rain, where the clouds have to go, where they're not. He set all that up. To flow the way he set it up. How the seeds will reproduce after themselves. He does not have to direct that anymore. So when we look at that stuff, we can be led by the Spirit of God. And again, these folks have brought back and, and I, will, I will call out Paul. I will call out those that went along with him in the scriptures to go back into a temple-like, a, a synagogue-like. <laughs> they move back into under man. They put priests back into play. They put pastors, teachers, and all these things that Jesus never, 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 never spoke of. There was only one when Jesus left to guide us. Everyone else was just to be a witness of what Jesus did, what they saw, heard, and what Jesus did in their life. That would be our only duty today. That's how Jesus left it. You could say whatever you want. That's how Jesus left it. I'm not buying the extra. I read it. I read it. I see what they did. In no way does that mean I'm following them. I'm following Jesus. And the Holy Ghost does not tell me I have to go back under man. What's the whole duty of man that, that Solomon said? Fear God and keep whose commandments? His. And I'll just throw this out to you, Matthew. <laughs> Let, let's 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 go there. I'll just go there. Let's 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 see here. Let's go to Oh yeah. And let's just go there for a minute. Let me just go Matthew. Alright. Matthew twenty. Let's, let's see, 20, 25. You know that the princess, Jesus' words, you know that the princess of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them. They are bosses. And they that are great exercise authority over them or upon them. And Jesus said very calmly, but it shall not be so among you. Now that wasn't very hard, was it? All right. Oh, well, that's just one, one area there. Let, let every word be established by the witness of two or three and blah, blah, blah. Right? Go, let's go. Let's go to Mark 10. Let's see. Is it 42? 42. Jesus called them to him and said, Ye know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and their great ones exercise authority upon them. But so shall it not be among you. Hmm. 
Matthew, Mark. Is there another one? Yeah, sure. Let's go. Let's go to Luke. Mm, 22. Amazing, it's 25 and 26 like Matthew. So he says here in 25, Then he said unto them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. Verse 26, But ye shall not be so. Hmm. Wow. I didn't write it. Three separate writers recorded that. God made sure that should be known. So there you go. I, I don't know any, any better way to tell you than just face value. There it is in Scripture. Jesus himself, red letter words. So these folks feel like that there is a pastor, there's bishops, and you, you, you name it. There's, there's just a hierarchy. They've rebuilt that into the system. They went back. And, and by the way, let me just let you know that in the, in the UPCI, I've heard it taught. I've taught it. Uh, that's how I started teaching it, because that's what I heard, is the fact that Catholic is bad, bad, bad Catholic. That's the mother heart of church and revelation that Jesus is talking about with the, the horror, great horror that's that's got blood of the saints dripping down her her lips for deceiving them. But uh, yet almost all rituals have been taken from the Catholic Church. I'm not going to get into the Council of Nicaea and all these 325 AD, all that stuff at this time. But they want to bring back the whole deal of the priests, pastors, teachers. They even throw that in there. Oh, you, you got the fivefold ministry. Why didn't Jesus talk about a fivefold ministry? Why didn't Jesus talk about tithing? Jesus named ministries. Look it up on YouTube. We go into a lot of these things. And we talk about it. We even talk about uh, tithing, and and we go through David Bernard's teaching on tithing, and and, and show exactly what kind of, it, it, to put it bluntly, what kind of hypocrite he is in, on that subject. I, I give him a lot of credit on a lot of things. Uh, I think he gets a lot of things right, but not the church. Man is very knowledgeable, which leads me to believe that when you're knowledgeable as that, um, and then I've heard that he's been part of the who's who, and if you know anything about the who's who, you've reached a high bar in, in both education and all around understanding of, I guess, life. So when you look at these type people with such high bars, you can only, I mean, I'm going to say that there might be a slight percentage that, that some are just ignorant, some was just led away, and and it's not hard for, for smart people to be led away because Jesus said he, he'll confound the wise, and and so, and, and he'll, he'll, he'll make smart those that are unlearned. Um, it was blamed on the apostles. Look at these dumb and unlearned people. Uh, we know they've been with Jesus. Look how confident they are because God was doing miracles in their life and, and, and others' lives and through them and using them. And they built that confidence and faith in God, not in themselves. But that's not the churchy world today. I call it churchy because it, it is churchy. It's almost a comic to me these days. And... and Again, I'm not going to go into any arguments about how, oh, well, this, this does good and does good here and does good there. Let me tell you something. Just because something does a little good here and a little good there doesn't make it right. And, and Jesus was very adamant about that, that even the devil comes as a wolf in sheep's clothing. 
So deception is the greatest um, enemy to all of us. And you know who that comes from or through? Not, not Satan. Not saying he's, he's not the seed of it through man, but Jesus said man is the greatest form of deception where the way it comes through. So here we are, and, and I just wanted I wanted to touch another thing here, which what we're what we're talking about in this. Finish reading here. Um, talking about the pastors, priests, teachers, and evangelists, and prophets, and uh, apostles. The apostles were were the main witness. They were they were patient zero. And I say that because people understand patient zero. This is where it all started. Jesus handpicked them. They were witness zero. They seen those miracles. They spoke to Jesus. Jesus did not make them a replacement to what he taught. He made them witnesses of what he said and done. They were to share those things they witnessed just like we are. Just like the woman at the well that Jesus did not rebuke, he did not restrict. He said, go tell them. When she realized this was the Messiah, this was of whom the prophet spoke of that was to come, the Messiah. When she knew, when Jesus revealed himself to her, he did not give her a list of things that she had to do. Why do you suppose Jesus did not lay out commandments as Moses? Why do you suppose that? Because the greater thing that Jesus came to do was to put his spirit in us so that we lively stones we would be built up as a lively people someone who had direct access through our minds and our heart to serve him not by some old list not by some letter the letter killeth but the spirit is life the spirit is current if you were to write something down about today and the new technology today one week later you would have to revise that but see jesus wasn't about to go back to the letter he was about to put in you a current spirit that he could speak into you at any moment you could speak to him at any moment. This is the way. This is the new and living way. Not the stagnant, not the old pond that sits there. But he said a water, the river, rivers of living water, moving water that will grow up and spring up into life everlasting that will take you somewhere. You will not be pigeonholed. You will not be stuck in time. But the Holy Ghost will lead and guide you, not just once, but always. And he will be with us through that. So another thing that, that I just wanna bring up, the Holy Ghost is not divided in the special gifts. And that's what they try to put out. They, the, the whole thing of the church and all this stuff. Jesus never spoke of his spirit or any kind of spirit, for all that matters, that would be divided or given out in pieces of special gifts. Because there was nothing talked about. Jesus didn't say, okay, I'm going to heal this guy of blindness. Um, so I'm going to use, hold on, let me, let me get my quiver. 
pack here. Let me get that arrow out. Let me get the piece or portion of that spirit that's going to heal blindness. Well, let me get this other arrow out that's going to grow a limb. Let me get this other arrow out who's going to forgive sins. No, you didn't hear any of that because it's not existent in the kingdom of God. This is man-made. This is where they can set hierarchy. They can set importance. They can be important. They can impart to you. You never heard that from Jesus. There's only one spirit, one faith, one spirit, one God of all, through you all, in you all, Father of all, the Holy Ghost. And that same spirit that rose, raised Jesus up will quicken your mortal bodies as well. Oh, not, oh, let me, let me, oh, do you have the rapture spirit? Hmm, never heard Jesus talk about a rapture spirit. Jesus said it was that same spirit. One spirit, one faith, one baptism. So no one gets to impart some spirit of gifting to you. This is heresies. These are, these are false, deceptional lies that these ministers have been bamboozled by that spirit of hell. It is everything against what Jesus taught. It is everything that Jesus didn't teach. So when anyone says that, they're dumb, ignorant, unlearned, or they're straight up being deceived and deceiving you. Their motive is their own importance. Their motive is their organizational importance. Their motive is religion. Their motive is evil. No one gets to impart a piece of the spirit of any sorts unless it be witchcraft. This is not backed by Jesus or any apostle during his time there. And I will not say that through later on after Jesus left that these some of the disciples may have been bamboozled by be it Paul or some of these writers that, that maybe made up some of this stuff. I don't know. I'll tell you I don't know, but I do know it's not right. Jesus did not say it. It does not jive with Jesus. It does not jive with the spirit that Jesus has gave to me. When he says, one, When, when all the history of God says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. When all the history of what Jesus said, follow me. Jesus said, come follow me. Jesus didn't say, follow me until I leave. And then I'm going to point, no. He said, the spirit, I'll be it, the spirit. They that worship God must, it's not optional, worship God in spirit and in truth, through spirit. My kingdom is not of this world. It's not of some church building. It's not some organization. <laughs> I'm not even going to go in there. I had a thought, but I'm not going to go there because uh, we're, we're, it would just make this video much longer but that's some of the stuff i just wanted to bring forth to you i wanted you to hear me say it i know i've written some of this stuff down i write it down and and and, and i put it on facebook and some of you may just look and say ah him again whatever he's talking about the same old stuff that's okay no one i'm not required by god to make you believe and i'm thankful for that not my problem. I am just to obey God in, in, in putting voice out there that God has impressed on my heart. 
to to say and do and that's what i'm doing today i am listening and doing what god told me to do you take that up with him if you don't like the message and if you don't like it you don't have to hear it because many didn't hear in his day uh, and that's all right it's okay with me i don't i don't take it i don't care if you like me or you don't like me and you know of course the 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 normalcy is to hope everybody likes you you want to be a uh, part of something greater than yourself and that's that's put in us and i suppose that i can't uh ignore that and i i hope you like me but i'm not being dissuaded by what god tells me because you think something isn't what you want to hear so anyhow and I'll kind of paraphrase this, um, abridged it, if you will, kind of made some sense of the way I see it and the way I interpret this, saying it's, it's found in Ephesians 4, 14, 15. Um, again, you know, I've, I've had comments saying, oh, you don't believe this and you don't believe that. What about this? What do you, do you believe Romans? You believe Ephesians? Well, not everything in Ephesians is bad. Not everything in Romans is bad. Uh, I'm not pointing out anything that is bad. I'm just saying the fact is, is that I will lean on the truth of Jesus. I will lean on his spirit. And if it goes against what he said or what he did or the characteristic or by the spirit by which he did something, then I am not going to take it as something that I need to do or should do. Um, and, and let me just read this real quick, but it says, and become suckers of manipulated scriptural meaning by those we were taught to trust. And to get back to that, where we were taught to go to church. That's why when we feel the calling of God on our life, we feel like we have to go to church. That is not what God is telling us to do. That is what man has put in our minds to want to do because that's what we feel we're supposed to do but answering the call of God is not joining yourself and placing yourself under the the guise and the authority of some religious situation okay it's not all that so but they pull you in. And the audacity by which they pull the deception off. As they lie in wait to deceive you. As an animal in the wild to consume you as the weak and the wounded. See, you can have a business and you say, well, you know, I got to go out and drum up business. But if you have the right business, let's just say you have a hospital. Obviously, people are going to get hurt. You're going to have a certain level of business by just way of chance. And the churches sit there. And if they've done nothing, they've done nothing to go outreach. They've done nothing to feed the communities. They've done nothing. They're still going to get a measure of folks that by happenstance, by just means of life people are going to feel that they need to come in so there's going to be those people that don't understand that god is calling them to have a relationship with him not through a church not to come under some authority figure at some made up false fake religion outside of what Jesus Christ taught himself they lie in wait the great deception the Christianity that 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 they want you to know the facade and again you can you can listen you can listen to many messages in Jesus name ministries on YouTube you see that I am not saying that there's nothing good that 
can or has happened through a, a physical church and, and, and a group of people that mean to do well. Those are givens. But that does not get you to heaven. That does not satisfy what Jesus said we had to do to evade hell. Wide is the gate, but narrow is the way to find life everlasting. In 2 Peter 2 and 3, I believe, my eyes are reading right, and through covetousness, their own want, their own need to feel big and important to guide other people, even through the guise of righteousness, through the guise of ignorance which the devil loves to use with these people, through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. That's why these people teach the old law of tithing and it doesn't even apply to the new church. What Jesus came and set to do, the ordinances and things were kicked out. And, and, and if you really study it, it wasn't ties to a pastor, to a church, to an organization. There was no ties in that sense. Go, go listen to the whole deal with uh, uh, David Bernard. You'll, you'll find it. It's out there, Jesus Name Ministries. I think I've even put, put links to it recently in the, in, on Facebook. But look at those things. Find them. Listen to them. Make the choice yourself. You and you alone and I and I alone is going to stand before God one day and we must give an account of the deeds that done in this body. We must answer to the wrongs, to the ignorance. The Bible said God once winked at ignorance, but now commandeth he men everywhere to repent To whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever? Jude 1 and 13. Again, thank you for watching, um, listening this morning. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope that I have been able to obey the Lord and in speaking some things that might trigger you to think more of finding Jesus and following him, not through some man or some organization, not through some religion. None of this message is negative. And I know people oh, just talk about negative. Yes, you need to be free from religion. You need to find Jesus, which is life, and more abundantly. Uh, and, and, and quickly, I'm just going to say that I started on this, but, but Jesus never caused anyone harm. And I, I, I even brought up the fact that where he dumped the money changers' tables. Didn't say he laid a hand on anyone, but yet Paul starts out to tell you that Jesus took away his sight. Hmm. If you are not shocked in everything you've read about Jesus up until that point, if you are not shocked that instead of restoring sight, of someone blind not made by him, by Jesus, but finding them already in that condition and restoring their sight, if you are not shocked that Jesus, through this man's testimony and word, says that Jesus took his sight,
Perhaps you need to reread who Jesus was. But they want you to swallow this down like a camel. That's why Jesus said it. You'll choke on a little mat. But you'll just swallow a whole camel. Hmm. Becomes real, doesn't it? And then, followed up, Paul took the sight of another man through the spirit by which he took it. You don't find that strange? I mean, red lights aren't flashing when you read those things. Did you ever hear of such things by Jesus? And what about Ananias and Sapphira? Who by all collections of, of what I read and I've heard other um, different uh, thoughts on this but they seem like they were disciples to me. I mean, why would they even come and offer any money if they weren't part of the group? But I've heard it said, oh, you know, these, these folks were, uh, they were just selfish and blah, blah, blah. Well, why would they even be there? That doesn't make sense to me. That does not jive with Jesus. So here we go. They kept some money back when they sold their land. Why would they sell their land? Everybody was selling their land. It's kind of like this, this communal thing and let's kind of help each other, you know. Well, they must have been somewhat on in it. Why would you not have a little skepticism? Wait, it's not Jesus. I, I might have a problem if, if, if Jesus said to do it. But these are men that you really don't know, and I don't know how long they knew these guys or whatever. Hey, I'm a blah, 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 whoever, whatever. But, you know, hey, you know, we probably should just keep a little bit back. Let me ask how many of you, by this same token, have sold all your stocks and gave them to the pastor you've known for a week when you came into church? Let me guess. Zero. And those that might have are considered the dumb as a box of rocks. And what about the ant and the wisdom and all the other things we read in Proverbs and all these other things that uh, we're supposed to just make sure? And how and why would we give everything away when the Bible tells us that if you don't care for your own, you're worth, worse than an unbeliever? So why wouldn't I keep back a little bit for my utilities for next month? Why would I not keep back because my car is about to go out? I may need to get another alternator. Why would I give everything I had to a few men that I don't know a whole lot about? This is what they say. I, I want to believe them. But the crux of the whole thing here is the fact that they want you to believe, the writer wants you to believe that because they didn't give 100% of all their funds, that somehow, wink, wink, didn't say exactly, but you know, I mean, what are you left with? The Holy Ghost killed them. Murder by the Holy Ghost right there on the spot. Not the Jesus I read about. Not the Jesus you read about either. But yet we'll go beyond there and we'll see these men and these women and these supposed leaders that the church world wants us to suck down hook, line, and sinker like a big old camel. Man.
man, we got to we got to get smart here. We have got to 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 allow the sense that God gave us to start playing a role in our life again and follow Jesus. Deception is by man. Religion is the greatest deceptor. This is exactly what the Antichrist, when he is come, will use. This is your whole coexistence. This is everybody's going to melt into this melting pot. You're already being groomed. You're already being lead, led by this man. It's just a matter of changing dancers, changing partners. Here you go. I got them all ready for you there, Antichrist. They're, they're good, obedient people, and man, Jesus can come talk to them, and they tell him he's, the, he's not the right one. So we, we got them all set. All right, God bless you. Thank you for listening, and, and I hope, again, I really hope that you have learned something today, and I've been able to bring it out for you. Think about it. Pray about it. Let God be true and every man a liar. All right.